sort of wanted to start by kind of telling a story of um, something that happened a couple of years ago. I write a blog called I Like Boring Things. I wrote a, a, a thing about um, like modular buildings and security huts. And um, I'd, I'd, at the time, I'd spent a lot of time looking at the website of a company called CB Fabrications. Um, it's www.cbfabrications.co.uk if you want to look it up yourself. And um, in particular, I looked at their gallery page. Um, I mean, we've all, we've all done it late at night. <laughs> the curtain's closed, looking on the internet at pictures of modular buildings and security huts. Um, they've all got, they've got like really evocative names. This one is called Waiting Shelter. <laughs> closed kiosk. And really, aren't we all? And this one's called Delivery. <laughs> it's not, not so profound, that one. But they've also got these really weird photos where... <laughs> it looks... <laughs> it just it looks like they've been photoshopped or something. It doesn't look like that can be real. Um, and also, the, uh, on some of the photos, there's no way of telling when that photo is taken. That could have been taken at any time in like the last 20 or 30 years. Um, this one does have a bit of a car, which you could use to try and date that when that photo is taken. So I, I put on Twitter if anyone was able to, <laughs> to identify the car. And a, a few people sort of came up with a few suggestions. And then there was a bit of disagreement between... <laughs> They, they've rebadged it, you fool. That's, that's an Alan Partridge reference. Um, so what, what kind of was interesting about that is that it's quite normal for people to be knowledgeable about cars. Like when I was at school, people would always like talk about what car they would, wanted to get when, they were, um, when they'd learned to drive and stuff like that. And then they, occasionally, when they decided to talk to me, they'd ask me what car I'd like, and I'd say, like, a, a blue one. <laughs> I don't, I mean, they're all, that's all the same type of car, isn't it? <laughs> six examples, it's just six identical photos. Um, so, so what it kind of says to me is that there's these kind of areas of our culture where it's sort of acceptable to be knowledgeable about and no one thinks that you're weird, whether it's football or pop music or cars. Um, <laughs> to ban the cars. That's considered like kind of normal, but if there's anything that falls outside of those areas, then it, it, you're described as sort of boring. Um, like previous years, who've, he's here somewhere, uh, we've had Peter Fletcher, who counts his sneezes. Every time Peter sneezes, he writes down in a notebook the time, the date, where he was, what he was doing, and a measure of strength from <laughs> mild, moderate, moderate, strong, strong, and very strong. Uh, Tim Steiner, who loves electric hand dryers uh, so much that he's got a Dyson Airblade installed in his house. Uh, Layla Johnston, who takes photos of IBM tills wherever she sees them. And that's kind of considered uh, boring. And, it, and it's kind of what the, the day is about, is, is examining those areas which may not sort of really fit into acceptable enthusiasms. But the, the, sort of the greatest example of, of sort of the greatest celebration of the pointlessness of human ambition, I think, is the 1990s TV show uh, You Bet, um, which, if you're familiar, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, it members of the public would, would sort of undertake um, large, uh, sort of extraordinary challenges. Um, we've got this, a couple of clips. Um, I mean, we're all fans of the London Tube map, I'm sure. Uh, this is one person. Imagine trying to memorise it if we took away the station names and made all the lines the same colour. Would you be able to identify a small section of it? A Herculean task? Well, we shall see, because Jay Clark from North London says that he can identify 20 little sections of the London Underground map. He will tell us the lines shown and the stations featured. One last thing, Jay is only eight years old. 
Um, yes, yeah, there was a little twist at the end. He's only eight. Um, it was presented, uh, originally it was presented by Bruce Forsyth, then Matthew Kelly, and then finally Darren Day and its dying Darren Days. Um, here's uh, Matthew, but Matthew Kelly kind of presented it in its glory years. But here's Matthew Kelly being unnecessarily rude to a bus enthusiast. <laughs> Well, so, how did you get interested in uh, buses then? Oh, it started when I was about seven, like, when I used to go out a lot. Yeah. And it de developed from there, like, well, it's here I am now. <laughs> so, where did you used to take buses when you were seven? Uh, well, with my mum, like, to Romford, like, going shopping and that. Oh, yeah, because the buses are really interesting in Romford, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> You're weird, you know that? <laughs> how many bus routes are there, in fact, on the London system? About just, just over 500. What I like about that clip is it reveals sort of the contradiction at the heart of Matthew Kelly. Because <laughs> on the one hand, he wanted to go in like with the, the obvious gag at the guy like, oh, you're weird. But then there's still part of him that thinks, I wonder how many buses there are <laughs> in the London. 500, oh. He's, he's a very complex man. <laughs> Obviously, like, you'd think... If you're going on a program like You Bet, you would, you'd go on there fairly confident that you can achieve or succeed in your challenge. Um, you wouldn't just go on with just like without really doing much preparation. Are you ready? I'm ready. A, a woman who minutes, your time starts is identifying now. cast members of the bill. Christopher Ellison, D.I. Frank Burnside. Small Cheers. sections of their face. Oops, I'm not on. Uh, what's that one? <laughs> Hugh Higginson, PC George Garfield. Mm -hmm. That one. Colin Bloom, no PC. Francis Taffy Edwards. Yes. Um, Graham Cole, PC Tony Stan. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> the, the, the really sweet bit is when she realises her mistake and she just goes, oh no! <laughs> um, and there's this challenge was, uh, it was on the Isle of Wight, and well, they have to suspend an egg between the buffers of two steam trains. <laughs> um, but uh, the most extraordinary clip that I sort of found when I was looking on YouTube a while ago and it's actually it's disappeared from the internet. So now I, I'm sort of beginning to wonder if I just made it up. Because the clip involved um, like a German teenager who was blindfolded and then he had to lick stamps from different countries and identify the country of origin <laughs> based on the, the flavor of the glue. And if you think that this was when, like, this was in the early 90s when this would have been on. It, most people didn't have cable, Sky, Channel 5 didn't even exist. There was no real internet to speak of in the same way that there is today. Primetime Saturday night, ITV. Millions and millions and millions of people watching a teenager licking stamps for three minutes. <laughs> and the idea that that could be primetime entertainment, like, if that, there's no way that would be on TV now. It just, it, it seems like some sort of weird situationist art prank that that could have... <laughs> ever get on TV, but the fact that he was German kind of makes sense, because the You Bet format, um, oh, actually, oh, sorry, yeah, um, the one place, if you do a Google search for the link, it turns up on a website called Swinging Heaven, <laughs> where someone references it, where they make a, a smutty joke about licking technique, which I don't approve of that sort of thing. Uh, so it makes sense that he's German, because... Um, yeah, it's based on a German format called Wetten uh, das, which means, want to bet that? Um, and on, on Wikipedia, it's got sort of examples of some of the challenges that they, that they had there. Uh, a blindfolded farmer recognizing his cows by the sound they made <laughs> while chewing apples. And it seems like blindfolds are sort of a recurring theme. Um, here's a man blindfolded and able to identify the shades of different colouring pencils by sucking them. Uh, 
Lauton. Lauton war richtig? Lau. Nee. Sternhagelblau wäre falsch. Ne? Ja. <lacht> Denn richtig ist, ist äh, Bergblau. Bergblau! That's impressive, isn't it? Um, this is a, a, a German teenager who's blindfolded and is able to identify vinyl records by using his fingernail as a stylus. I would say this is Justin Timberlake with Senior Reader. <laughs> But um, it's, it, they don't only involve uh, blindfolding people. They have some other challenges. Some of them are sort of slightly bizarre. I mean, <laughs> but if you think that those were weird, um, I mean, this next one involves a small boy who's about, I don't know, nine, ten years old, getting dressed, getting undressed and then dressed while suspended between two wooden posts. Um, oh, sorry, I, I forgot a bit. Um, actually, yeah, what you can see here is the, between the, the contrast between these two clips of blindfolds is the development in blindfold technology. <laughs> uh, this is obviously a much more recent clip, and the blindfolds are, are, are quite, quite small, compact. Back then, obviously a lot bigger. It's, it's kind of like um, mobile phones, computers. They're sort of getting smaller as time goes by. In the 1950s, a blindfold would be like the size of a house and there are only kind of four in the country. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he, he's getting dressed between yeah, two wooden weg. posts, suspended between two wooden posts, much in the same way as an egg suspended between the buffers of a steam train. The, the most extraordinary thing about this, like, out of all of the extraordinary things about this being on television, is that this isn't just filmed in like a normal TV studio or just like... <laughs> It's filmed in this enormous amphitheater. With look at, the, look at the size of the audience. Like, that's like a hundred fifty thousand fifty thousand people. Would you say? Like, you think? Because you imagine that Germany is this sort of culture, like sort of cultured, serious, sober people, and. And because I, I don't really speak German, so I, I, when they're explaining what the challenge is, like, I don't, you have to sort of just try and work it out based on what they're doing. And this one, like, there must be some other explanation because what it looks like is, it looks like some children dressed as ghosts and then other children identify their friends just by looking at their belly button. <laughs> I mean, it can't be that. <laughs> but it, it does look like that's what it is. And... The, the most extraordinary thing about that, it's like all of the other challenges, like the guy who licks, who sucks on the colouring pencils, you could imagine, you know, you can see how he learned that, he just sat at home, closed his eyes, picked up a pencil, sucked it, saw if he was right, and just practised. Whereas those kids, they had to get their fr all of their friends to agree to prolonged belly button examination. <laughs> so if my, one of my friends asked, I'm going on, they've just brought you bet back, I know you like you bet. I'm going on you bet. Oh, what's your challenge? Well, I thought you could help, actually. I'm not... I don't want to be friends with you anymore. <laughs> uh, but th so this realisation that Germans are slightly kind of odd reassured me that I hadn't made up this, this German teenager licking stamps. And so I started looking online, and on the BFI website... Um, says Carsten Eber of Germany identifying stamps by licking them. So it, it did happen. 
And they've got some other examples of episodes. Can a JCB type a letter? Can a, <laughs> can a helicopter pour a bottle of wine? This program features 25 cows and a forklift truck. <laughs> and then uh, I looked on IMDb as well, and they've got on the message boards, um, this person said that they just saw a repeat of an episode where there was a little boy on it who rattled off the names of loads of sharks. Joe Lilly was his name. 18 years ago it was. Just curious to know what he's up to now. <laughs> I wouldn't usually take much interest, but like I said, he did an excellent job on there. <laughs> And this person said that there was a, a, a forfeit where um, Annika Rice had to sing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire with Kenny Everett. And for the filming of this episode, the directors required a dog to sit in a car and howl when the song was played. My dog was chosen. Obviously, she is long gone, but I would love to have a co copy of the episode to keep and wondered if anyone was able to help in any way. And then... Post deleted, this message has been deleted by an administrator. An administrator from you bet. Um, and th there's this review as well. Did I like it? You bet. For years, you bet was the diamond in the big, shiny, intricate crown. That is British Saturday night television. I didn't write this, by the way. So this is the cultural importance of this program cannot and should not be underrated. One evening, I ran up a debt of over 10 pounds with my brother, simply because I thought it was impossible for British astrologist astrolog Patrick Moore to play the xylophone in the buffet car of a British rail train. And the, the, the people who tried and failed to suspend the egg between the buffers, they did have three minutes to do it. So... Now, I don't think they'll have time to set another egg after this. The clock is against them, and it must be their last attempt. Yeah, that was uh, when it was presented by Bruce Forsyth. He says, now, I don't think they'll have time to set another egg after this. The clock is against them, and this must be their last attempt. He takes it very seriously, Bruce. That's my, the end of my talk about you bet. <laughs> <laughs>